Hello there, and welcome to my 100% playthrough of Ion Fury on Ultra Viscera difficulty. This is Zone 3, Area 1, the Washington Institute. Now, where's the party? Ooh, did someone say party? I like parties. And seeing as how we have 11 secrets to find and 146 enemies to kill, I'd say we're about to have a pretty banging party indeed. So let's just get right into things, shall we? So, here we are in Zone 3, which, um, yeah, Capital Offense is not the name of the zone. I don't know why that's there. Uh, I don't entirely remember, uh, entirely remember what Zone 3 is called, but, uh, yeah, the level name is still at the bottom. I really don't know what Capital Offense is now that I think about it, but yeah. This is the Washington Institute. Let's get, uh, right into the action. I'm gonna start right away with two greater cultists. Just snipe them with the lover boy. And then the further you advance down this here parking lot, you're going to have a car alarm go off, and there's other enemies, mostly uh, cultists. Kind of trying to be sneaky here. Hide behind all these cars. But we can just pick them all off, or at least most of them off from here with the lover boy. Or just manually shoot his head off. That always works. And I think that's everyone for this first area here. Uh, you can't go through there. That's just for sp uh, for for sport, for decoration. And this is a dead end. So this is just a bunch of rubble blocking your path. So only way we can go is this way. Inside. Man, building so tall you can't even see the top of it. Oh, well, you kind of can. Right up there. <laughs> that's a tall ass building. Anyway, this, I can only assume, is the Washington Institute, the titular building for this level. But uh, before we step inside, let's take a little dip. For secret number one, armor and disperser grenades. Alright. Now let's go inside, shall we? Hello? Anybody home? Anybody? No? Alright, I'll just waltz on in. Oh no! I've been spotted. So we're going to have two grenadier dis er, dispersers, liberators, directly in front of us on this platform here. Take care of them first. Go ahead and get rid of this guy because he's trying to shoot me in the back. We have two, actually like five or six, greater cultists over here. Ooh. Along with a shotgunner liberator. Taking a bit more hits than I'd like to, but that's all right. Yeah, you have one hell of a welcoming committee inside here. But once the welcoming committee has been fully dealt with, which I think they have, yep, there are, I believe, two, at least two more secrets to get in this main area here. Hmm. Caring. Integrity. Welcome the future. Uh, excellence. And innovation. I really, really like this texture model, whatever it is here. How the text is actually 3D, or at least it looks like it is. Very nice. See, back in 1996, when Duke Nukem 3D was made, the very first game using this build engine, stuff like this wouldn't have been wouldn't have been possible, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, enough dawdling around. So, secret number two. Actually, you only have to jump on top of this. Open the portrait here for a couple of bowling bombs. Secret number three. You want to destroy the water cooler tank which will fry that outlet and explode the wall, revealing a medium armor. Three secrets, just like that. So now that the secret hunting is done for the time being, I'm gonna take a little trip into this here bathroom. I don't think there's any bad guys in any of these stalls, but this stall here is locked. But if you jump inside, you can find a penetrator with some flechettes. And that's actually the second one you find. The first one, I believe, is in the outside area, the very start. Probably by one of the cars. Um, so, let's continue on into the building. Listen to what Heskel has to say here. Welcome to my humble abode. What you should be humbled over is what you're compensating for with this building. Ooh, roasted Heskel. By the way, I did, I, uh, did not mention this until now, but uh, Dr. Heskel is actually voiced by John St. John, the guy who did Duke Nukem's voice. Also, Big the Cat from Sonic the Hedgehog. 
it's quite a changing character there. Anyway, let's go through these this hallway here. There's a cultist over there. There are two greater cultists camping on this couch, waiting for you to show up. And we have a ton of tacos here. Shelly loves her some tacos. And where we have to go now, so this door will open eventually, but only from the other side. So ignore it for right now. Go through this door when it's open. Just be sure to time it correctly. This door over here opens, revealing, I believe, four mech sects. I'm just going to go ahead and play some bowling. Nice. I got all four of them in one bomb in my practice run, too, so that was nice to be able to replicate that. And then this door leads right back to the starting area. No real reason to come here unless you just want to fish around for some supplies or get the secret that you missed. So, next stop. Uh, this door does not open quite yet, that's right. I don't know exactly when this door opens. It might be after you go through the tunnel, so just ignore it for right now. But secret number four is actually right in this little recessed hole in the shrubbery. Oop. Go ahead and take cover. Getting shot. Yeah, you're immediately assaulted by... Looks like four cultists and two greater cultists. Nothing too bad, including one way up there. There we go. Alright, so next we go to the tunnel. It's where you're going to hit your first autosave. If that matters to you. Go ahead and get these... Oh, I think I got him. There we go. Get those two Liberator shotgunners. There's going to be two... Oh, nope. That's around another corner. Yeah, I'll go through the vent first. So this vent here will kind of... Give you the drop on some enemies. If you want to roll a few bowling bombs that way. But yeah, I think I already killed the ones that the bombs could actually reach. So, rip. Oh, yep, there's a Liberator Grenadier just down there. Cultist right here. Go ahead and take care of him. And there's two. Yeah, you hit another autosave here, by the way. There's two more greater cultists trying to crossbow me from over there. Go ahead and... There we go. Take care of them. Now, before you advance through that bay door area there, there is another secret. Inside this here truck it is just beyond these doors, but you cannot actually use the doors themselves. What you have to do is go to where the truck crashed through the wall here and see a very, very hard-to-see switch. Shoot it. And there you go. Open sesame. For a blast accelerator. Let's go have some fun with these while the fun lasts. So we're going to have a Diopede, a Deacon, another Greater Cultist. Yeah, kind of unfortunate there's a, a Deacon in here, because I'm pretty sure the... Well, never mind. I was going to say I'm pretty sure the Bowling Bomb wouldn't reach him, but I guess the explosion did. Interesting. Open the door to this uh, little cargo area here for some mech sex and at least one drone. Get out of here, you stupid spider. There's plenty more mech sex. You already know the drill by now, hopefully. This game in mech sex is like Duke Nukem 3D and Protozoid Slimers and Sentry Drones. Just loves to spam... Well, goodness, you are a jumpy little thing, aren't you? Won't jump no more. Okay, okay, let's see here. So you can either go directly up this conveyor belt here, but be careful, because up in that room up there, there are two deacons waiting for you. And that is a very close-quartered room, so the splash damage from their wristle, their uh, wristles, I guess that's a portmanteau of rockets and missiles, the splash damage of their rockets will hit you very easily. So it's safer to go this way, up the side room here. Where you actually have some distance to put between you and them. And then just gun them down. Akimbo Penetrators OP OP. For Deacons, anyway. So we'll scrounge around here for some more supplies if you would like to. And then we're going to... Oh yeah, there's two stim packs down here, in case you need those. Thankfully, I do not. And then we're going to go right back inside the Institute. Oh, hello. There we go. This here is the yellow card, uh, or yellow key card door. You can't go through there quite yet, but the yellow key card is just over there, being guarded by a turret. I like the way you go ahead and blow that up. Um, let's see. 
Let's go ahead and get these armor fragments. I think you can go through... No, that opens when you grab the yellow key card. That's right. This also opens when you grab the yellow key card, and both of these elevators will come down as well, revealing a deacon in both of them. Or at least a deacon in one and, like, a greater cultist in the other. It's one of the two. And... Yeah. So before we do that, we're going to go this way. Hmm. Giant crack in the screen. I wonder what that could hide. Now, yeah. Be careful when you grab the chain gun. You're going to summon three greater cultists. Actually, technically, it's like six. It's like six or seven. I just whip out the grenade launcher and you'll take them all out pretty easily. Speaking of the grenade launcher... Whoa! Whoa! Okay, you were supposed to explode on the... There we go. I guess I must have aimed a little bit too high and it didn't explode on contact. That was strange. Anyway, if you jump through the destroyed screen in the wall, you'll end up right above this area here, where we were at before. And we are going to get yet another secret through some minor platforming. Now, this jump looks a little wide, but it's not too hard to hit. But be careful, as soon as you climb at the top of that ladder, you're pretty much going to immediately uh, vault yourself to the top of that air conditioner. And it can be very, very easy to overcompensate and just walk off the edge without even trying to, so just be careful. So this secret here is a little bit of a puzzle, nothing too bad. No tasers. Well, guess what that means. Streisand effect time. Bash that, stand on top of this fan, let it lift you all the way up, and then just... Whew, you can strafe run into the secret, or you can run directly ahead. I don't really think strafe running is required. Um, actually, does strafe running even help you in the build engine? It may not. I think it's just my years of playing games in the Doom engine that make me think strafe running always helps, but in this game it may not. Oh, yeah, try not to take any damage when you drop back down. You can jump to the top of this here generator, and it will prevent you from taking any fall damage. So now we're going to drop back down here because I believe... Yes, we can now open this door. Now, why would we want to? Well, we have some ammo. We have a hot dog. God knows how old it is, but Shelly still eats it. Some bourbon to wash it down. A little security monitor. Oh, hey, look. There's me. Well, that's real nice and all, but there's got to be a better reason for this uh, office opening up, right? You bet your ass. You bet your ass. Secret number seven. Just open that screen, grab the medium armor, and get the hell out of here. And then we will simply go back to where we were. Unfortunately, we can't... There's no jump boots around here, so you can't just jump back up there to immediately get back to uh, where you were. But what you can do... Oh, actually, you know what? Nope, I can't. Crap. I should have grabbed the yellow key card. The door right here would be open if I grabbed the yellow... This is the, this is the door that leads to where the yellow key card is. If I had grabbed the key card, I could have just gone back through there, but I didn't, so I have to go back the long way. Oh, well. Not too... Not too much of a brick wall there. Thankfully, your movement speed in this game is really, really fast. Another thing reminiscent of classic FPS games made in engines like these. You can just run ridiculously fast. Go ahead and scrounge for some supplies while you're at it. Because supplies are always nice. Gotta be sure you're well equipped to fight all those baddies. Okay, so now we're finally back here. Make sure everything is reloaded, and it is. All right. So, yellow key card. Excuse me. You grab that. This opens. That opens. And both of these elevators come down, revealing an enemy in each. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go ahead and look to... Actually, we're going to get this guy first. Or these two guys. Uh, You know what? Oh, he's not dead. Wow, I kind of messed that up. <laughs> I was going to say, let's get the deacons first. I really missed that? That's more like it. <clears throat> I was going to say, get the deacons first, but then I forgot there's like one or two greater cultists here. And then I was like, eh, I'll get them. And then I missed like my first shot or didn't kill them. And at that point, I was just like, you know what? Let's just survive. But yeah, you have two greater cultists over there. A regular cultist over here. I think another one from over there. And then a deacon in each of these here elevators. So, a little bit of an ambush, but nothing too bad. So, and yeah, this door here leads you back to the main area that we were at before. 
so let's see. Um, can I? Is there a chair in here I can push? Uh, let me see. Oh yes, there is. So uh, there's other chairs in this map that you can push other than this one. But for the sake of not getting too far ahead of myself, we'll just use this one. Push the chair to where this uh, fan is. For oh well, there we go. Another secret. Now, this is actually a bit of a branched pathway. So, that room there, that is the red key card room. You can actually just take this as a shortcut, bypass a whole ton of stuff, and get up there, uh, or get up here without getting the red key card and everything. But you're, as you can probably tell, not at the best angle to fight those, what was that, five or six Liberator shotgunners. They can definitely pick you off from over there. They won't deal too much damage, and you can just toss bowling bombs in there to, you know, waste them pretty efficiently, but, eh, again, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. I'm not going to take the shortcut. It's just there if you want it. The secret, however, is just beyond this slightly mistextured wall. Eh, I don't really think it's a different texture. It's kind of hard to tell. It's a bit of a low-light environment, but, yeah, just walk through here, and, yeah, you can't open this. you got to bash the vent open and drop down here. You're in the little courtyard-ish area. Some ion bow ammo, you have a health pack, a stim pack, and I think there's another stim pack. Seems like there should at least be some kind of suit of armor out here, but there's not, so whatever. And just go back to where you were, and we will continue on. Through the yellow keycard door, right over here. Now there is gonna be a bit of a fight inside here. There's gonna be some drones, some liberators, some cultists. I can toss a few bowling bombs at him. Okay, the bowling bombs are not... Nah, there we go. Yeah, for some reason, I don't know. Bowling bombs never seem to work out too well for me in this room, yet I keep trying to use them. <laughs> I'm a sucker for pain, I guess. Yeah, there's a few bad guys to take out inside here. Nothing too insane. Just your standard... Standard fair. Well, hello. Where are you behind the? Oh wow. I've never seen him hide behind the signs before. Let's see, there's some chain gun ammo. Take out the drone. <clears throat> okay. So let's just kind of go back and take in what happened. So you go uh, go in here. There's this big fight. Some ammo on the floor. There's uh, another set of bathrooms here. And these bathrooms actually do contain at least one or two cultists in the stalls. And you can destroy the fan, uh, both to take that pathway and take this one, which leads into the other bathroom. Wow. How did he miss that shot? He aimed just a little too high. <laughs> oh, I love that. Shotgun just makes you explode into a fountain of blood and jibs. Alright, and then this pathway here takes you to... I forget where. Oh, yeah. So, another kind of shortcut here. You can go through here. So, in this room here is the red key card. And then once you grab the red key card, more enemies, in addition to who's already out there, will spawn out there. But again, I'm not going to actually take any of the shortcuts. Just so I can show you the, I guess, intended way of getting through here. But, I mean, if you want to take it, feel free. It's there. I mean, the option's available. Might as well take it if you want to. But, before that, we have ammo and lover boy inside the freezer here. And there is another secret here. So, jump on this uh, very narrow edge. Try to loop yourself around to this sign. And then carefully jump to the other signs. Oh, hello there. Yeah, you can't get me through there, can you? At least I hope you can't. That'd be weird if you could. And then you want to see that uh, patch of wall that's differently colored? It's like a Jump over to it. Free armor. And then armor spell with a U for all of our uh, international friends out there. But yeah, there's a suit of heavy armor just behind this invisible wall here. Or see-through wall, whatever. Whichever the proper term is. So you have nine... Whoa. Nine secrets found, two to go. I know where one of them is off the top of my head. I think I know where the other one is. But uh, let's not uh, think too far ahead here. Oh, that's a diopede. I don't want to pistol him. I want to grenade him. 
I'll pistol you instead. Alright, let's gonna go through this uh, common area here. Rec room, whatever you want to call it. Break room, more tacos. Uh, randomly assorted slices of American cheese, it looks like. Uh, which you cannot eat, I don't think. Yeah, you can't eat the cheese. Good. American cheese is not even real cheese. It's just oil disguised as cheese. Um, so you can go through this door here if you want. To get into this room. Oh, wow, you got me. But, once you grab the red key card, yeah, you're going to have some new bad guys spawn in. So those are all Grenadier Liberators. And there's going to be uh, some Deacons. Oh, no, those are, okay, two shotgunners and a Grenadier. My bad. I thought they were all Grenadiers. <laughs> My mistake. But, we now have the red key card, which means, which means there is a Grenadier down here. Hey, how are you doing? Want to die? Thank you. Alright, so to the red door. There's going to be a greater cultist at the top of these stairs. And then once you round this corner, there's going to be not one, not two, not even three. Oh, oh, I had to reload. Crap. But there's going to be four deacons. Wow, that was a direct hit. Oh. Oh, maybe it's just three. I could have sworn there was four in my practice run. Guess not. Okay, three deacons. Nothing too bad because you're in a narrow uh, corridor here, but yeah, don't get as excited as I was and get yourself shot. Because <laughs> those missiles really, really hurt on this difficulty. Those missiles do not play around. But uh, let's just give these guys a bit of a special delivery, shall we? Mail service! That's, oh, now that's what you call priority first class. Go ahead and grab this armor here. There's tons of soda pop on the table. That looks like diet soda. Gross. Yeah, she'll still drink it, though. Soda soda, I guess. Uh, secret number 10, fireplace. Crouch through. Jump up here. Ultrasonic radar. But the fire does hurt you, of course, so don't stand in it for too long. And then flip this control room switch. Which will lower that platform that the Grenadier Liberators were on when we first entered the room. And also summon two greater cultists. So we're just gonna... We're just gonna jump right into the action. Not gonna get overly fancy here. And I believe, yes, the final secret is down here. Now, if you played the preview campaign, the final part of this level is also gonna look familiar. I forget what the level was called in the preview campaign, but... You'll, 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 you'll see. You'll see. Yeah, you drop down, you're immediately going to be assaulted by a good few enemies. Mainly just cultists right now. Nothing too bad. Just lover boy them all to hell. Go ahead and destroy these explosive barrels. If you so desire. Don't really have to. Whoop. Say my name. Ooh, excuse me. So... If you played the preview campaign, you probably already know where this final secret is. Hmm. Maintenance access. Yeah. Maintenance. Sure. Was was that was that obvious enough? Oh, and look, there's the item right there. Yep, there's your secret number 11. A suit of heavy armor. Go ahead and kill the, kill the last enemy in here. And before we flip this here switch, which will summon in even more enemies... We are going to jump into this maintenance access. So you have to step up, I think, three stairs? I think if you step up two, you can't get enough height on the jump. Oh, no, you can. Okay. So, yeah, two steps up and do a looping, strafing jump. Ooh, man, that armor feels nice right now. I took way too many rocket hits from those deacons. That heavy armor is fitting really nice right now. Anyway, flip on the elevator power. We are going to be going further up into this building. And we have a few more enemies whoa, left. We have a greater cultist there. Another one there. Oh. Yeah, we got some excited grenadier. Man, that grenade took off almost 50 points of armor. Wow. Wow. Man. Yeah, explosives in this game are no laughing matter. If those things hit you dead on, it's going to take a chunk out of your armor at the very least. And if you don't have any armor, well, God help you. 
That's all I can say to that. So we're going to go through these vents. There's a portable med kit, which I don't need. You know what would be nice? Portable armor kits. So you can replenish your armor whenever you wanted to. Eh, that might be a bit too easy mode, but be a pretty cool idea, I think. Through the store, you have a diopede and a greater cultus. We'll just take care of both of them. Man, that is that is nasty. I love it. Call this elevator down. Write it back up. <clears throat> Do I have to step off the thing? Oh, okay, you have to cross it. And then go back through here. Well, look at that. We have... Oh, nuts. He did it again, didn't he? That deacon flew through the wall my practice run, too. Yeah, that's... Damn. I couldn't be sneaky, but I still got them all in one bomb, so that's nice. Yeah, that deacon decided to play no clip and just fly right through this glass wall here to try and surprise me. Oh. I'm sorry, did you survive that? There we go. But yeah, four greater cultists and three deacons. I think it goes without saying that those guys are really unhappy that you uh, reclaim this building. <laughs> but, that is everything. 11 secrets out of 11, and 147 kills out of 147. So, all you gotta do to exit the level is to jump in this elevator here. G for ground. Well, guess what weird direction we're going in? You guessed it. Up, up, and up. And that's it. Oh, don't read that. Slight spoiler. Yeah, elevator disabled. <laughs> But anyway, that was the Washington Institute, Zone 3, Area 1. I, I am... A, a lot more about this zone is coming back to memory now, and this is another level that I believe, to an extent anyway, was in the preview campaign. So if you played that, you'll be familiar with this next level as well. But this zone is going to be a lot of fun. You get to go through this giant, you know, corporate building. So you go through a lot of offices, a lot of break rooms. I love levels like that with more realistic scenarios. I always love those levels in Duke Nukem and Shadow Warrior, and I love them here in Ion Fury as well. But the Washington, uh, the Washington Institute, which the word institute is not the easiest to say fast. What do I think about that level? It's very fun. It does have some tricky areas, like uh, there's quite a few deacons you got to take out, and it, it doesn't seem like the deacons' rockets do a whole lot of damage at first uh at first glance, because there's not a whole lot of feedback. That, that's one slight gripe I will have uh, about this game, is when you get hit by heavier weapons, there's not really a whole lot of feedback on screen. Like, there's <clears throat> there's barely any shaking, or the screen doesn't really turn all that red, which normally would signify, oh crap, I just took a crap ton of damage. I better, you know, seek cover and use a portable med kit, or look for health, or be more careful, or whatever. So, when you get hit by something like a Grenadier Liberator's Grenade, or a Deacon's Rocket Volley, you may not immediately think you're taking that much damage, but as you can see, at a few points in that, uh, in that run just now, the Deacon's Rockets and the Grenadier's Grenades, phew, man. I'm pretty sure that grenade didn't even come close to hitting me directly, and it still shaved off that much armor. I think it was like, I think it was at 200, and it went down to like 156 or 154. Yeah, that's a lot of damage, and again, if you don't have any armor on, or have very little, and you take a direct hit from a rocket or a grenade, it may not kill you if you have full health, but if you uh, if you don't, yeah, it, it might just kill you. It might just end your run if you're trying to play without saves, and that would be a very annoying thing to have happen. You're having this really good run, all of a sudden you make one or two missteps against enemies that use explosive weaponry, and then all of a sudden you're dead. And you gotta start the whole level over again. Thankfully, the levels are not the longest, and they don't really... Even the levels that are long, they don't really feel like a slog. Mainly because, again, and I'm gonna keep specifying this, or bringing it up, the varied environments, the fact that every room looks so, you know, different to an extent from any of the other rooms, it really just breathes new life into the level as you're going through it. It doesn't make anything feel too samey, you know, look too similar... And that's something that I feel a lot of other games, you know, especially like, say, um, Episode 2 in Duke Nukem, you know, the space chapter, Lunar Apocalypse. There was just so many rooms that looked the same, and after a while it kind of got a little a little repetitive. There, You know, there's only so many, 
tentacle covered corridors I could pass through before I was like, okay, I've kind of had enough of this. I want to go back to Earth, damn it. And thankfully you do in episode three. But uh, yeah. But yeah, fun map overall. Uh, nice to know that uh, you know, it's a very nice concept that you're going through this, basically from the bottom of this building all the way to the top. Slight spoiler, you're going to go all the way to the top and that's where you fight the next boss. But you just go in gradually up and up and up. And there is actually, if memory serves, yes, there is another surprise this zone has for you. But I will not spoil that just yet. Now, if you played through the game, you probably already know what I'm talking about. But for those who have not, you'll just have to wait and find out. But until then, when we get to Zone 3 Area 2, I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.